In today's video, we're going to be experimenting with some silicon stamps in resin. I have here these two magazine packs that come with some, and I thought it'd be pretty cool to see how well the designs imprint in resin. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take them out of the packaging, and I'll be right back so we can get started. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and chosen the stamps that we'll be working with. I've chosen this very pretty, very intricate flowery one, and then for my second mold, I've chosen the 70s vibe van with the hello beautiful stamp to go underneath it. These are the molds we'll be working with, and I'm so excited that I'll finally be using this mason jar mold. I've had it for way too long, and I can't believe I've waited so long to use it because when I first saw it, I didn't think twice about buying it. <laughs> Now, to make these stamp designs stand out, I'm going to be coloring them in with some mica powders. Um, I have here this amazing set from J Diction that comes with 24 different mica colors, and I've gone ahead and chosen seven of the colors. Because these stamp designs are so ditty and so intricate, I'm going to be using micro brushes to color them in. Now I've gone ahead and sped this part up for you guys. It took me way too long to color in these stamps, but I'm really happy that I did and how they've turned out. I think adding color to the stamps will definitely give it a more wow factor to it in the end. Using these micro brushes really made a difference. I'm pretty sure if I had used my regular brushes, the colors wouldn't have been as precise and it would have been a lot messier. Once the stamps were colored in, I then laid the stamps down carefully on my molds, making sure they were centered. Now, I didn't use anything to stick the stamps down to the molds. Um, I honestly didn't know what to use, and I really didn't want to mess with it. But the stamps do have a slight stickiness to them, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be enough to keep them in place. Then with my micro brush, I pushed down on the stamps a little, just to make sure there were no air bubbles trapped between the stamp and the mold. And then it was time to mix up my resin. Now here I'm using Tea Experts regular epoxy resin for the rims of the pieces, but later I will be using their deep pour epoxy to cover the stamps. I'm actually running low of the deep pour resin and I didn't have enough to cover this project, so that's why I'm using two different kinds of resin. Anyways, I mixed in some black resin pigment and a little bit of glitter and then proceeded to pour the resin into the molds. Now I did overfill the rim of the first mold and instead of cleaning it up, I decided to keep going and fill it enough to be leveled with the stamp. I thought since I had added the glitter to the resin, it would look prettier to have the glitter in the background and around the van stamp to kind of mimic a starry night. As for the mason jar mold, I just kept the resin in the rims like I originally intended to. Then using a toothpick, I gently went around the rims to push out any air bubbles that could be stuck in the edges. A few hours later and the resin had cured to the touch and it was time to go in with the deep pour resin. Again, I mixed in some black resin pigment, this time leaving out the glitter and I filled the molds. When it came to pouring the resin onto the stamps, I just carefully let the resin drop off my mixing tool. Afterwards, I was super tempted to go in with my toothpick and poke around to try and take out any air bubbles that could be trapped in the intricate designs of the stamps, but I knew if I did, I'd probably scratch off the micas. So hoping for the best and praying to all the resin gods, I filled up the molds, covered them up, and left them to cure. By the way, if you guys cover up your pieces like I do with food containers, be sure to leave a small gap so that there is a little bit of airflow so the humidity doesn't ruin your resin work. One of my lovely subscribers has brought this to my attention and I thought I would pass on the tip. But if you don't want to use food containers like I do, Dollar Tree also sells food tents which are also great at keeping dust particles out of your resin work. 48 hours later, the pieces are ready for demold, and it's time for us to see whether the stamps will leave the design imprints on the resin and how good it looks. But first, we're going to demold the pieces and then we'll remove the stamps. Okay, so everything looks good so far, and I'm really happy the stamps didn't detach from the molds while the resin was curing. But the mason jar piece has been left with some weird blemishes, and it's also slightly warped. I wonder what happened here. I'm really hoping it's not from the mold because I'd love to use this mold again. Okay, so now when it came to removing the stamps from these pieces, the struggle was real. I tried using different tools to help remove them, but they barely budged. In the end, I just kept picking at a corner with my nail and pushing it away with my fingers until I could get a hold of the stamp to pull it off. 
I'm not gonna lie, it probably took me a good 20 to 30 minutes to remove the stamps and I did end up ripping two of the three. Again, I've sped up this part and cut out some of the footage so you guys don't have to see me struggle. <laughs> but at least we didn't get any air bubbles in the stamp designs. <laughs> Funny enough though, we did end up with a couple of air bubbles in the mason jar mold design itself, so go figure. As for the stamps, it does seem they have been damaged. As you guys can see, they're not as straight and as stiff as they were in the beginning, which totally sucks. I am wondering though if I'll be able to reuse them in resin again and how difficult it would be to remove them from the resin a second time. To finish these pieces off, I decided to mix up another small batch of resin and dome them. For the mason jar piece, I domed the inside to cover up the blemishes and to also cover up the slight warp it has. As you guys will see, pouring another layer of resin is such a great way to hide any mistakes your pieces may end up with once they've cured. As for the other piece, I only domed the rim to make the glitter pop. I didn't want to dome the inside because I wanted to leave the stamped area as it was since it looked so cool. Overall, I think this idea was a success, even though it may not be worth buying stamps specifically to do what I've done here. Um, I'm really glad I got these stamps for free. I'm pretty sure I would have been way more disappointed that I ripped and damaged the stamps if I had bought them myself. I'm also really impressed with how well the deep pour resin picked up the imprint from the stamps and I think I'm going to be using the rest of the stamps the same way. I really like this idea and even though I know I'll probably end up ruining the rest of these stamps, I want to play with this idea some more. But what do you guys think? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments and also let me know if you've tried this before. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you've learned something. If you did, please smash that like button. And if you want to see other things I've tried and made with resin, check out one of the videos that are popping up on screen now. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!